Hello everybody and welcome to another board game discussion video. Today's topic is all about rules for buying new board games. This is something that I've alluded to quite a bit in the past where I've talked about my philosophy of board game collecting, I've done a walkthrough of my collection as it stands, and a few other things along those lines, but I've never really laid out really explicitly how I determine whether or not I'm going to purchase a new game, so that's what I wanted to do for you guys today. And this was brought up because I've been talking about it with a lot of my gamer friends and and there's been some discussions on forums and a few things along those lines where I've seen that a lot of people have very different rules about how they go about determining whether or not they're going to get a new game. And this comes especially coupled with things like Kickstarter and Indiegogo where you see games before they even exist and how do you determine whether or not you're going to get that when you have virtually no information about the thing. So I thought it would make a really fun discussion and of course most importantly I want to know what you guys think. What are your own thoughts and and rules that you follow when you're going to buy a new board game, please let me know what they are in the comments below. But with that, we're just going to go ahead and get started with my own reasons, with the first one being price. That's right, I'm still a cheapskate. I don't make a lot of money, I don't have a ton of disposable income, and so my first thing that I look at is, is something cheap or relatively inexpensive? More specifically, this goes to games that have been on my wish list for a relatively long time that become inexpensive. They go on sale or whatever it happens to be. So a good example of this is relatively recently at a bookstore that I'm nearby, Dead of Winter, The Long Night was on sale and it was in the 50% off bin. This has been on my list for quite a while, ever since I heard about it, honestly, I had already played Dead of Winter. And so this is a great re-implementation, standalone expansion that plays wonderfully and is just a ton of fun. And so I picked up a copy because it was so, so cheap. Also, relatively recently, we had Amazon Prime Day. And with that comes a lot of great board game deals. And so I picked up a couple from that as well. One of them being Hail Hydra. So this is a really fun social deduction game that, again, has been on my list for quite a while. Hasn't really flown under the radar. It's been well known reasonably. It was never super expensive, but it was even cheaper on Prime Day, so I went ahead and picked it up. And the last one that I wanted to mention specifically for this is Vast! I finally got Vast Crystal Caverns because it was on sale for cho so cheap during Prime Day, uh, or relatively cheap. And the thing is, the savings weren't great, but it's a game that has been on my list for a really long time, and so I was just like, yes, I'm finally going to pull the trigger. I'm finally going to do it, right? So that is my main rule, honestly, is about price. I go, I research games, I watch review videos, I read reviews that other people write, and I just figure out, is this something that I personally would enjoy? Or I'll be playing it at my FLGS, at my regular game night, and say, is this something that I want to have in my own collection? Um, now that said, one of the major rules that a lot of people have that I've heard of is, I have to play the games that I already have. If you have your quote shelf of shame, you may notice that, for example, Dead of Winter isn't even open. Um, and so a lot of people have games that they've either unopened or they haven't even played or they haven't played very much. And so a lot of people have a rule like that where if they don't play it so frequently, if they don't do this, if they don't do that, then they're not allowed to buy new games. They don't allow themselves to do it. Other people keep to a specific number of games and so you have your one in, one out sort of philosophy and that kind of thing. But um, for me, price really is what comes down to it. Part of that is because I work so much, I have a lot of other stuff going on that I'm rarely able to go out to my FLGS to play other games. So unfortunately, if I were to hold myself to the idea of having to play every game, you know, five or 10 times or whatever it is, I'd never buy anything new. Now that said, it's not necessarily a bad thing to not buy anything new, but I like to expand my collection. I like to get these new games that I really want. The only other major aspect I really wanted to talk about regarding my rules concerns Kickstarter and Indiegogo and things of that nature. How do you determine, even if you're basing it on price, whether or not a game is going to be good when you can't see it, you can't hold it, you can't play it, you can't do anything with it other than see a description and maybe a couple of videos that the publisher is putting out? It's impossibly difficult and I've done a bunch of videos about Kickstarter, so I don't want 
want to reiterate and retread all of that stuff too, too much. But suffice it to say for me, I really look at theme, I really look at the company, and I look to see the general quality if it's available. So when I say theme, you guys know if you've been watching my videos, I love science themed games, I love science fiction, and I really like fantasy games as well. As far as companies, there is a handful of them that I trust more than others, uh, companies that have a really good record on Kickstarter of getting things out efficiently and with good quality and having good games in general. And so I'm more prone to be backing those guys. And then of course, just the price in general, is it something that seems reasonable? So miniatures have become a huge problem. So things are very, very expensive or they tend to be more expensive and that tends to push me away. But by and large, I don't like backing games on Kickstarter anymore. I just don't do it. It's become more cesspooly than I'd like it to be. And the games that I've gotten, thankfully, have all been very good and I'm really happy about that, at least by and large, uh, mostly. But right now, with so many of them going on, I really worry about it. And it boils down to my original major issue, which is just the price. I can't afford to be throwing this money at these things, hoping that it's going to be as good as it seems. And so I'd rather wait and see how a retail version does, or if worse comes to worse, potentially get a secondhand copy. Good example of this is Scythe. When the original Kickstarter for Scythe came out, I was extremely tempted to back it, but ended up not doing it because I couldn't afford it at the time. I ended up um, getting the retail version though, and I'm completely happy with that. Um, I was able to really better assure myself. I was able to play it at my FLGS, read more reviews, watch more reviews, do all of that, and realize, yes, I actually do enjoy this, and I really do want it. But that's pretty much it for me. Those are my two main things that I really talk about or that I think about. And primarily it boils down to price for me. There's a ton of games that have been on my wish list for years that I really want to have, but I simply can't afford it. And um, I'm a lot less willy-nilly about it when it comes to sales even, just because of the sheer space that all my stuff is taking up. And honestly, I'm not really worried about it. I don't have a huge problem with it. I personally am okay not playing all of my games games five or ten times just because I know I don't have time to do it. Gloomhaven, Twilight Imperium, for example, I was extremely happy to get those at the prices that I did because they were very inexpensive. And I know I'm not going to play them very often, but I also know I'm going to take care of them and I'll be able to play them whenever I'm able to. So I'm really happy about that. But with all that, it's more than enough rambling from me. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Once again, please let me know what your own personal philosophies for this are in the comments below. How do you determine whether or not you buy a game and why, please let me know. You guys know I love to hear all of it. In addition, if you haven't done so already, please take a look at all my various social media pages as well as my Patreon page. On those, you can interact with myself, my channel, and all sorts of other cool things in all sorts of cool ways. But with that, thank you so, so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.